In last lecture, we have been talking about the gas fees in uh, transactions. So the gas you, you need to pay for when you are making transaction. And in this lecture, I'll continue with additional AI lecture and I will be uh, talking about some uh, additional stuff, especially when you are creating a transactions, why we are also uh, calling the contract here. So why, when we are running Truffle mi Migrate, why we are not ju just deploying contract, but why we are also calling this, uh, this contract here. All right, uh, let's start and let me a little bit recapitulate from the previous lecture. I would like to again emphasize here that the basic transactions when you're sending uh, money, if, if ever from account to account costs uh, 21,000 uh, gas. And a gas has some value. The gas has a value of a, of a ether. Okay, you need to pay the ether for a, for a gas. And usually this is uh, stated in a gaze. So when you go to a Ethereum or Ether gas station, you will see the gas price in the in a way. And you have these three different prices. You have a fast price, you have an average price, or a slow, right? So oops. So you have a slow, slow, average, average, and you have a fast. And usually the slow is of course lower. So if it's slow, for example, can be 20 gway, average can be 25, five and fast can be let's say 30. So whatever you will choose. So for, when I'm making transaction, I will choose the uh, 30 gway for a, for a gas. So 21,000 multiplied by, by 30 gway, I will transfer it uh, into Ether and that's how much I will pay for a transaction. We sold the transaction here, we paid for 360, but the gas fees were uh, quite high at the time. Okay, so now let's continue with the, this other thing I was mentioning. Okay, let's open Ganache here. And whenever we are migrating the contract, uh, we are also calling the contract function, okay? so. Yeah, as I was mentioning before, we can call a contract functions when they are on the blockchain. Uh, this is actually happening automatically for us when we are running truffle migrate. Truffle migrate command is deploying the contract and also it's calling the contract function. It's calling this function here on the migrations.sol. It's calling the function set completed. And here it will provide the number of the completed, uh, completed migration. Okay, so when we have deployed only migrations.sol, so when only this has been deployed, the contracts, the migrations, you, you would see here last completed migration will, would be number number one. When we are deploying the faucet, my, when we are deploying faucet contract, last completed migration, we, are, we, are, we will deploy first the contract, the faucet is a faucet contract that has been deployed to the network. And the second call, the second transaction is going to migrations uh, contract and it's setting this last completed Last completed uh, address basically to, to the to the two. So we know that last completed uh, trans uh, last completed uh, smart contract that has been uh, deployed or migrated was uh, of our faucet migration. So when I will run here, for example, when I will go to faucet here and I will run here again uh, truffle migrate. This um, migration contract is keeping track of all of the um, migrated migrations, and you can see here everything is up to date. Uh, actually, yeah, there is nothing to compile because we already compiled, but network is up to date, so I'm not able to co to to deploy my uh, contracts any longer because my migration contract is keeping a track of uh, all of the contracts and they are already on the network, so there is no reason to redeploy uh, them to the network. Okay, so that that's usually happening automatically when you are using Truffle, when you're running Truffle Migrate, that this will also you will have this migration contract and whenever you're deploying the other contracts also set completed function with the number of the migration will be executed and it will set it to the storage of the contract so we know what was the last migration we have uh, what was the last contract we have deployed number two okay and we all we have our setting here the number two contract we are deploying here to faucet migration okay the other thing here i would like to talk about here is this uh, is a transaction that has been deployed the contract. So this, that's a transaction that has deployed the contract. And let's take a look here on the transactions. Uh, here is a transaction that deployed contract. But I would like to inspect here. We already know that the transaction data here is a, is a contract code. And then we'll take a look on the contract call. We can see here transaction data. The transaction data here is not the contract uh, code, but uh, the, actually it's a contract code. But this is the signature of function that we should call. Because of course, on the blockchain, as I told you, your uh, contracts are in the format of the bytecode. And here I am saying, this is telling me what function I should have call. This is the hashed version of the function, and this is the number two, that is this input parameter we are calling here. These two, these four bytes here, these four bytes here, saying to what function call, this is sent completed. And this part here, this two, 
is the parameter of the function which we are passing this number to. I'll be talking about this in the next lecture in a bigger detail. I would like to first uh, introduce you hashing functions because this this transaction data are hashed. Okay, and how they are hashed, I will show you now. So what is the first hash function? In uh, in Ethereum, network or Ethereum, a very popular function, hashing function is called Ketsak 256. 256 is saying that the uh, output length of uh, any any string that will be hashed will be 256 bytes, which means 32, uh, 32 bytes, okay? So f this function f works following, okay? So I will provide an input, let's say uh, any input, right? It can be binary data, it can be string da data, it can be anything, it can be file, and so on. So I can provide some data, let's say I'll provide uh, my name, okay, I'll provide my name. I will run it through the ketsack function, so this will run through the ketsack function, and I will get this it input in hexadecimal format, okay? 32, 0, 1, A, B, and I will have a 32 of these bytes, so I will have a 32 bytes. 32 bytes, and it's always 32 bytes. Okay, that's what this function done, and I, I, it doesn't matter what length of the string I will provide here, it can be longer than 32 bytes, it can be the entire file of, uh, of the strings. It always will output me this 32 bytes hashed version of this string. Uh, what is special about this hashed version of this string is ver it's very hard to reverse it. Okay, what I mean by that, if I will give you this number I got from the Philip name, so 0x3201 AB and so on and so on, if I will give it to you and I will tell you, get me the original value, you don't have any other option just to randomly run the strings. Uh, through the Ketsak function, so you will try, okay, I, I will try to run there, uh, let's say, I will try run to run Philip, I will run to run for Pete, oh, Philip, okay, that's B already, he would find the solution, so he doesn't know about it, so first, let, we'll try Peter, we'll try the A, B, we'll try 37, we'll try 100, we'll try to run it through the Ketsak function, and we'll, we'll see what outputs they will get, and we'll try to compare it with this one, but there is, no, there is no way just to reverse it and to get from this here, get the original value. It's very hard. You just need to randomly run values through Ketsak function, basically. So that's a, that's a special thing about this Ketsak. That's a, a one-way function. It's very hard to reverse it. And when you see this in a ganache, this is also run through the Ketsak function. This, these input bytes are run through the Ketsak function. I will show you how in the next lecture, but first I would like to show you this not this one. Okay, I would like to show you Ketsak function. So Ketsak 256. All right, and here is online. Okay, I'll input here my name, Philip, and that would be version of my name. So 32 bytes, I can verify it. So this is uh, here. We can verify it's 32 bytes. Let's uh, get the length. You can see 64 selected. And uh, 64 selected means that it's 32 bytes because uh, this is one byte, this is one byte, this is one byte, this is one byte, this is one, uh, this is one byte, okay? Because it is in a in a hex format, so one uh, one character is hex, uh, it, 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 it's hex letter, two hex letters uh, composing of a one byte, and if the total is 64, you will divide it by two, you will get number of bytes, so 32 bytes is definitely here. Okay, so that's it. So that's the value. Okay, and you don't have any other way to find it out. So, for example, if I will change just a little bit this uh, string, I will not write here Philly, but I will write here, uh, let's say, there's a Philly. You will see it's completely, completely different string. So there is no way how to detect that the Philly and Philly are somehow related. They are completely different results when they are going through this hashing function. Okay, I can provide here any values. Okay, and you can see how this is changing. All right. I will always, I will always get different, different value. All right, so <laughs> that's what I want to tell you about it, to keep the, keep in mind this Ketsak function, this hash, uh, this hash function, and it's very, very important in Ethereum in environment because it's 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 used quite quite heavily. In actual we'll continue again AI lecture, I would like to talk about how we called this thing here. All right, guys, so that's gonna be it, and I hope to see you in the next lecture. Cheers.